In this video, we're going to create a race car track project in Scratch. We're going to draw our own track and then program a car to move around the track using our arrow keys on the keyboard and setting a, a different speed depending whether you're on the track or if you've run off into the grass. The project code is OR493. So pop that into the box and click on start project and this will bring you to the instructions. So this project is we're creating a racing car. So we're going to draw the track. We're going to upload a car sprite and then we're going to program it to drive around the track using our arrow keys. When it's on the track, it'll go fast. And if you run off the track and touch onto the grass, it'll just make it go a little bit slower. So let's get cracking. So the first step is to create a new scratch project. So if I open up the tip box here, I'll get the link to the scratch website. Click on that and it'll open up a new tab for you. And then click on the create button in the top left. This is going to open up the scratch project editor. Let's close the tutorials box and go on to step number two. So step number two is to add the car sprite. So included with this lesson is an image of a car, uh, a bird's eye, bird's eye image. So we're going to download this by right clicking on it and then clicking save image as. Save it somewhere on your computer. So in your downloads folder. And then once it's saved, go back into your scratch project. Go down to the Sprite button down the bottom right. Click on the Upload Sprite, which is a little up arrow. And that will open up this box where you can again go into your folder where you downloaded it. So I downloaded it into, into my Downloads folder. Select the image and then click on Open. And that will add it to your project. Oh, I forgot to delete the Cat Sprite. We don't need this, so I'm going to delete that now. So let's move on to step number two. So as we can see, the car is quite large when we upload it. So we need to make it a little bit smaller. So we're going to add a set size to 10% and that will reduce the size of it. So first of all, we need it when green flag clicked. Let's zoom in a little bit. So when green flag clicked and then in looks, we will find set size to 100% and we'll change that 100 to 10. So click on the green flag and we can see that the car has shrunken down. So step number four. Now we're going to draw our racing track. So there's a few different steps we need to do here. Um, if you wish, you can click on this little image and it, it gives you a little GIF of all the steps you need to do, but I'll also do it here now. So we're going to click on our stage backdrops over here. And then we're going to click on the backdrops tab. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to convert this to a bitmap. So click the convert to bitmap button down here. We want to fill in the, all the background in green for grass. So let's use our fill box to select a green, then select the paint bucket tool and click on anywhere. And that will, that will fill it all green. Next, we want to draw our black track. So we'll choose black by setting the brightness to zero, and then we'll choose the paintbrush. Now at the moment, it's only set to 10. So look, if I do a little test, you can see it's quite thin. It's, it's too thin for the car to be over it. So I'll undo that. And what we'll do is we'll set it to 90. And as you can see that that's quite a bit thicker. So we're just going to draw a simple loop track just to kind of box like that and that will do. Okay. So the next step is to place your car on the track. So we're going to drag our car and drop it on top of the track. And then we're going to add in the go to X, Y block. And these numbers here, this X and Y position will be pre-filled of with whatever we've dragged our car to. And then we're going to point it in the direction 90, which is pointing to the right. The reason why we add these is after you play a game, you want to start a new game. You click on the green flag and we want the car to start up at, at the top here and pointing in the right direction. 
So let's select the car and we're going to add some blocks to this. So first of all, I need to drag my car and put it up the top onto the track. So it starts on the track. Now, if I go to my go to X, Y, it's already filled in the coordinates, the X minus 80 and Y 131. And that's this position here. And now we want to just get it to point in direction 90, which is pointing it to the right. So let's just quickly test that. If I move it down here, just change the direction and click on the green flag, it moves back up to the top and point it to the right. So the next step is step number six. So we're gonna create a speed variable. So when the car is touching the road, the car will go fast. If the car runs off and touches the green of the grass, it'll go slower. So we're gonna use a variable to to decide which speed the car goes at. So go into the variables toolbox and click on make a variable and type in speed and click on OK. So we're going to set speed. Oh, sorry, no, not yet. So the next step is just to detect where the car is. And this is where we'll set what the value of speed should be. So we're going to add in a forever block, check if the car is touching green, then set it to two, go slow, else it must just be on the track, so set it to six. So let's go into control, get our forever block, and then get an if then else block and put it inside. And now we need to put in the condition in the if then else. So go into sensing and get a touching color block and drop it in there. Now we need to change this pink to be the green of our grass. So click on the pink here in the block, click on the eyedropper tool, and that allows us to get this eyedropper. So we can just put it over the green, click on it, and that will save that color into the box. So if it is the green of the grass, we want to go into variables and say set speed to the number two and else we will set speed to six so we can go faster. Now moving on to step number eight. We're going to program the arrow keys on your keyboards to move and control the car. So up arrow will move it forwards, down arrow will move it backwards, left arrow will turn the car to the left and right arrow will turn the car to the right. So we're going to add these in underneath the if then else we just added, but still inside the forever. So we're going to put in four new if thens. So let's put in the first one, go into control, get an if then, get an if then block. So we're putting it underneath the if then else, but still inside the forever. So what we want to do here is see if the up arrow key is pressed. So go into sensing and get key space pressed, but we'll change that to be up arrow. So if key up arrow pressed, we are going to move the car at whatever the variable speed is set to. So go into motion, get a move 10 steps and put that inside the if then, and then go into variables and get your speed variable and put that in to the move 10 steps block. So we can test that by clicking on the green flag and then holding down the up arrow. So as you can see, it goes fast, but then once it touches the grass, it goes slower because the speed variable is set to two. Okay, so the next one is the down arrow. So if the down arrow key is pressed, we're going to move minus two steps. So that is to reverse the car. So we can just duplicate this block here this group of blocks, change it to down arrow and get rid of the speed variable. And in the move 10 steps, we're going to put that at minus two. So if key down arrow is pressed, move minus two steps. So which will be backwards. So let's move forwards and then try backwards. And as we can see, it's reversing. So we just need to pro program the left and right arrow now. So for the left arrow, if that's pressed, we're going to turn counterclockwise by five degrees. And if the right arrow is pressed, press, we're going to turn clockwise by five degrees. So let's duplicate one of these and put it in at the bottom. So we'll do the left arrow first. So if left arrow key, key is pressed, so we don't want to move. All we want to do is rotate. So again, go into motion and for left arrow, we want to turn counterclockwise and add five degrees. So let's duplicate again. 
change this to right arrow and get rid of this block. And we're going to turn clockwise this time at five degrees. Okay, let's test this out. So click on my green, green flag. I can move forward and oh, I'll cut that corner a little early. And just testing the left and the right arrow and it all seems to be working. Okay, great. So let's move on to the next step. So that is to, to test our car, to, to test driving it, which I've just done. So give your code a run there, click on the green flag and make sure you can move forward, back, left and right. Make sure that the car goes fast when it's on the on the road and then if it touches the grass it goes slower. If anything isn't working just go back through your code, try and figure out what isn't working. So say your car is going even faster on when it's touching the green then there's going to be a problem with this area of your code. So to try and connect the problem that you're seeing in your project to what area of your code, what part of your code the problem could be caused in. So the last step is just to add in another track. So we, we've, we created one track and so you can create different tracks. And what we're going to do is program the space key just to rotate through them, just to cycle through them. So each time you press the space key, it'll move on to the next track track. So you can create many tracks. So we'll just create a second one here. So again, I'm going to click on the backdrops here and then click on the backdrops tab. We're going to paint a new one. So click on paint. As we can see, we've got a blank back, backdrop here. Now I want to get the exact same green that we had in our first track because our code uses that color. So if I click on the eyedrop tool here in the fill box, that'll save that green. So I'm going to click back into our new backdrop. We're going to convert it to a bitmap. Choose the paint bucket tool and paint all the background green. Now we will choose black by using the brightness, choose the paintbrush. It's at 90 already from the last time we used it. So what we want to do is we want, because when we click on our green flag here, the car starts in this location here. So we always want to make sure when we're drawing a track that there is a part of the track that coincides with where your car starts off. So let me just draw a little bit in just to make sure that works. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's on the track. So now I'm going to do maybe a bit more of a complicated track, more of a figure of eight track like that. And as you can see, it's gone in there. So now we're going to add some code to the backdrop itself to switch bet between the tracks. So go into events when space key pressed, go to looks and get next backdrop. So each time I press on the space key, it moves through the backdrop. So I've only got two, so it's switching b between them. But if you had more, if so, if you want to create three or four backdrops, then it'll go through those each time you click on the space key. So th that's the project. You can see, you can see if you can have any more ideas on how you could improve it. Maybe you could add kind of speed up lines. So, you know, you could put yellow arrows in here. And if, you, if the car touches them, you could set your speed va variable to be temporarily higher than six to make it give you an extra boost or there might be other things you could do like add in sound effects you know when you're going around corners make the tires screech and things like that so i hope you enjoyed that project i hope you enjoyed this video if you want to get our weekly coding projects make sure to click on subscribe and if you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see us make next just comment in the video below